Alright, everyone, sort of an update uh, after talking with Flomec extensively over email um, and posting on. Where is she at? On the uh, Daisy Lab forum. Uh, basically, if you search for Flomec oval gear, flow meter, and collecting measurements, uh, kind of. Shows you some of the stuff if you if you care and need to look at it. I think you might have an answer. Um, just wanted to get everything sort of up in terms of what I have, so that I can sort of show you. Um, I'm going to be progressing along the fact that change my DAC scaling. Uh, the units were adjusted, of course, after that. Um, then we're going to get into the power requirements and equipment specs, um, along with getting the uh, possible one or two new power supplies um, to hopefully stop this current wandering that I am seeing because it's getting me quite annoyed um, but yeah so I guess we'll go to the scaling first what we did um, if we go over to the current channels we've got pressure transducer milliamps and flow meter milliamps with a minus to positive 20 milliamp scaling. Um, let me show you why that is. God, I feel like an idiot for just doing that. But uh, there we go. Current range is plus or minus 20 milliamps. So for that, that's why it's 20 milliamps. Or that's why the scaling that you see there is there. Um, I wanted to make sure that there was nothing important. Uh, so this is all about my DAC. Um, it's really not as, let's see, when measuring voltages or thermocouples, simply use the utility software to select the type of signal range. Oh, that could be what I need to do. I haven't used the utility software yet. So that is also a difference between like essentially this um, and then if I were to close all this, there is this up here. Sorry, I'll try to make sure I'm in range. So this is the utility software, so I'll have to go into there, but that's not really the important stuff that I'm trying to show right now. Um, you can see that when I test it, we're basically getting what is more or less normal-ish. Now, asterisk here, of course. When this system was first set up, um, I don't know if, for example, when my boss was staying late talking to one of his uh, electrical engineer friends, when it was first sort of getting set up, um, what was messed with on the span and zero right there for this. But regardless, you can see that the amper rating is more or less the same anyways. Well, from when I last froze it, when I start running it, you'll also see that as well. Um, so... <sighs> That takes care of the DAC scaling and more or less adjusting the units. Um, so now I want to get back to this and I'm trying to think where it was. I think it was up at this. Try to beat y'all through this. I'm trying to scroll quickly. That's why I highlighted everything. <laughs> uh, ah, I did pass it. So, I think it's, oh yeah, it's on this side. So, if you see here, the power requirement is 1.4 watts, plus 10 to 30 uh, direct current volts. And uh, so, the interesting part is where you get to the connectors, um, I'm, I don't know, I guess it's just highly overbuilt, um, cause you're, you're not going to be experiencing that through that. Um, so I guess if this was a high current, I mean, like I said, it still doesn't make sense cause that would be what, 800 milliamps. So still, I don't know why that's in there. But I'm not an electrical engineer either, and it's not my forte, so I'm just guessing that 
That is telling you what those little green things will blow up at and, oh, sorry about that. Consequentially, when all that will also get fried. Um, Cause that's what would make sense to me <clears throat> if you're talking about current and connectors. So you can see here, I've got a power requirement of 1.4 watts. Um, you can see here with this, I've got 24 divided by you know, a little less, uh, well, yeah, a little less than half essentially. So regardless, this is putting out way more power than it needs to for this system that I'm using, um, especially when this is just in loop power. And this is just in loop power. And this is going to actually become a powered sensor anyway. So power supply to the DAC is not an issue. But now I'm wondering, and uh, let me make sure I'm on the yeah, track here. So we've talked about the power supply. Um, so now, yeah, I'm wondering if my current could possibly be wondering, just due to the fact how this is wired. Um, let me show you those in the clean virtual space first again. So these are the type of terminal blocks that we're using, um, where you can sort of have two independent, or geez, two positive and negative. See, I told you I'm not an electrical person, but uh, two positive and negative leads coming in, and you can actually bridge them out that way. Or if you wanted to, you know, you could have essentially all one positive bank. Um, this is the setup I'm using. So if you come back over here, that's kind of how it works. Leads and then where it goes and if you look on the bottom it's sort of annotated for the DPF or FPD so that would be uh, DAC pressure transducer flow meter and opposite on the other side so the interesting part is that uh, well, let's just see if I can do it like this I've gone in through here I'll just sort of, this is for the uh, Flowmic people that might be watching. I'm basically going to just blast past the parts where I've already set them based on um, the previous feedback that I got from them. Um, this is going to be changing, um, like I kind of mentioned, or might have got to mention sort of. Um, this is going to be changing to a Hall effect, so for now it's still a read. Um, I'm not doing NLC correction, not doing a digital output because I'm using Daisy Lab Lite and she don't do too much. Uh, so we've got analog output, yes. So we've got the flow and since we're reading in liters per minute, I put one liter per minute. Now why am I getting that? Uh, since this page is open, I don't want to do the computer. See that flow range right there? So, this is where it gets annoying as hell because I can program that in, but at 20 milliamps, I can't get to this digit. I, <laughs> and I mean, I don't know if it matters because when I first opened this thing up, it was at like all nines, just nine, 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 nine straight across this thing. So, I mean, I don't really, you know, think you can get too much So, you know, I wanted to put 40 liters a minute, of course. You can get all the way over to there and see it just didn't even do it. I kind of pressed it fast, so I'll show it again. But, um, so, see, last one on the, was it the right? <laughs> oh, second one from the left. So, that's one of these issues that I am not sure if, um, is screwing up my readings or not, but that's what I kind of needed to show better. Um, one other important thing I guess I should say is uh, obviously since some of these are thermocouples, I have already jumped these channels. So they have jumpers up here and uh, essentially you just jump those to create a loop circuit. So. Let me show you what it's doing while it's running. Hopefully this little baby computer can handle all of this at once. So, check out those amps. Ooh, that's getting a little bit better now. Oh, all right, not really. So, 
funny part being with these stray amps, um, adjustments not doing anything, um, and then what is it? The most annoying part where if I was to change the zero, which I think I'm gonna have to change the span, but if I was to do that on my pressure transducer, I mean I can't even get rid of that crap right there. So. Unfortunately, it seems like I'm gonna have to change my scaling or go into obviously the utility again to change some of the stuff that's in there. Um, what was the next part? So yeah, um, what I was gonna try to do first, then I realized because this system was not set up by me, that we already are gonna have an issue getting this to be perfect in a sense, just because we've got this high aspect always pushing down on a freaking pressure transducer. So, um, once again, not my design. Thought about it way after the fact. So, it's hard to make sure that I can get that to, you know, a real reading of zero, essentially, even though technically um, this is probably correct. So, now, what I'm getting at, or what I'm really trying to figure out is how many power supplies I should have. Um, it seems like from the sort of feedback that was initially given to me from Flowmech, <clears throat> they were concerned that my power supply is sharing loop with um, the, the main power supply for the actual DAC itself. Um, being that it's 1.4 watts and being that this is creating excuse me, around a little bit over 12 watts, um, not really an issue. So, then you can start looking at, all right, why in the world would the current still be like that for something where I've programmed into the range here, what the flow, or what the current output should be. Hmm, that's weird. My paddle isn't moving. My rate is zero on here. I've also got, when I've set up my gauge correctly again, and these are, all should be the correct units as well, um, where, you know, at one point, if I cut my freaking spread right, that should be reading correctly, and it's not, because you don't do anything to change. I don't know if a powered sensor is going to change that or what. But uh, this makes sense because, like I said, we've got a vertical issue. Now, I'm thinking that these are possibly synced up because this is all in the same electrical system, which is screwing that up in general. Just in, in general, it's screwing it up. And then, what was it, the last? Yeah, so it's screwing that up. And so the solution would be essentially a power supply that independently does um, the loop power, a power supply that independently does the DAC itself, and a power supply that treats this as a powered sensor so that when it's feeding loop in it's not really drawing too much or for the fact that the display when the battery dies like it has um, isn't also going to be uh, sort of affecting it from what it seems if I'm understanding the email or recalling it correctly because um, yeah it looks like my battery's straight up dead now it's not showing up anymore um, now if I were to turn off this system who knows, I could also change it. It would pop the battery back up maybe. But yeah, that's where we got now. So we've got uh, a lot more sort of progress, but at the same time, it still just seems like I'm still having the same exact issue where what has gone through in here um, and you know, where is it, this? Oh yeah, I forgot to show you guys the actual specs for that digital gauge on the top um, so right now it is just a signal input and then battery power um, and then see it does have a separate low power sensor supplies available when loop powered so once again if that's not going to be sufficient they should really really make that apparent and just maybe not even make it an option that you should hook up because this is a $1,500 freaking gauge that your sales rep makes you think, oh, it's plug and play. And even though I'm a mechanical engineer, I can figure out anything in the long run. And 
for the most part have, but just want to make sure since it is $1,500. So, I'm going to be changing it to this type of setup. Right now, it just doesn't have that, and it's set up as a uh, reed switch. So that I can test quickly and all that stuff, I've got to switch it to a hall switch uh, or a hall effect setup because our temperature, I want it to actually raise faster than 10 degrees C a minute. Um, and I know it will, so yeah, we've got to fix that. But this is the sort of programming scheme I just took you through so you can kind of understand more in graphical format what I was doing. and. Um, here's where you can basically see no digital output alright here's your analog output enter the flow and then basically you would just be finishing up from there so nothing I'm not trimming any data that comes out of there it's really freaking annoying and uh, as you can see at a nil value where it should be sitting at uh, I mean, it's kind of close, right? Because it's point 0.1 over. So it should be sitting around 1. I don't know. It's kind of weird how they're doing this. I'm going to try to run this thing, but this is really loud, too. So make sure this is all good. Oh, my goodness gracious. I forgot to unplug her every day. And, of course, that one. Church bells ring. All right. So. There's my differences. from the specs that are in this catalog and the manual, so. It could be these fittings too, a little bit, but uh, I don't know, it's about a little over a liter off, so. Could just be scaling at this point, who knows? Let me know your thoughts.